Question 1. At a junction, you see this sign partly covered by snow. What does it mean? C. Stop. The stop sign is the only sign in the shape of a hexagon. This helps you to recognize it even when the wording can't be seen. If you want to pass DVSA theory test in the first time, you can download our EOS app. App contains 2500 DVSA test questions, 250 hazard perception videos, 630 traffic road signs and 300 highway code rules. Even 98.50% people pass their test first time after using our app. You can find link in the description, download app for free from App Store which contains latest 2024 material licensed by DVSA Authority, get 3 days free trial for a limited time. Let's get back to the video. Question 2. What should you do if you see this sign when you're about to overtake? A. Hold back until you can see clearly ahead. You won't be able to see any hazards that might be out of sight in the dip. As well as oncoming traffic, there may be cyclists, horse riders, parked vehicles or pedestrians hidden from view. Only start to overtake when you can see the road ahead is clear, giving you enough time to overtake safely. Question 3. You're at an incident. Why may it be harmful to move a casualty? B. You could cause more injury. Be especially careful about moving casualties at the scene of an incident. Inexperienced handling of a casualty could cause more injury, or even prove to be fatal. Only move casualties if they're in danger, for example, from fire. Question 4. What does this sign mean? A. No stopping at any time. This traffic sign means no stopping on the main carriageway at any time, not even to set down passengers. However, you may stop in a lay-by. Question 5. Which of these signs shows an uphill gradient? C. You'll need to identify the sign in time, so that you can select an appropriate gear. Question 6. Which of these signs means uneven road? B. Some signs can look similar to others, but each one has a different meaning. For example, this one looks a little like the sign for a hump bridge. Learn the meaning of every sign to prepare yourself for how to react to them. Question 7. Which fuel provides a reduction in exhaust emissions harmful to human health? C. Low sulfur diesel. Low sulfur diesel reduces the levels of sulfur dioxide particles in exhaust emissions. It's widely available and makes a contribution to reducing emissions that are harmful to human health. Question 8. What should you do if you lose your way in heavy traffic? B. Drive on until you find a safe place to stop. Driving in heavy traffic needs 100% concentration. If you become lost, find a safe place to stop before checking a map or asking for directions. 
don't risk losing concentration by glancing at a map while driving, even if you're in traffic that keeps stopping. Question 9. You notice that one of your tires has a bulge in the side wall. What will happen if you drive the vehicle? B. You'll break the law and risk prosecution. It's a legal requirement that your tires have at least the minimum permitted depth of tread and are in good condition before you start any journey. Make sure that you inspect them before setting off and at regular intervals. Question 10. Your vehicle is more than 3 meters, 9 feet 10 inches high. Where is this information displayed? A. In the driver's cab. It's a legal requirement that information about a vehicle's height can be seen by the driver from their seat. It's important to know the height of your vehicle so that you can avoid any height restrictions on your route. Question 10. Your vehicle is more than 3 meters, 9 feet 10 inches high. Where is this information displayed? A. In the driver's cab. It's a legal requirement that information about a vehicle's height can be seen by the driver from their seat. It's important to know the height of your vehicle so that you can avoid any height restrictions on your route. Question 12. How can vehicle breakdowns be reduced? D. By regular servicing. Following the vehicle manufacturer's guidelines for service intervals will enable worn components to be replaced before they fail. This will help prevent costly breakdowns. Question 13. What could happen if you overfill your engine with oil? B. Some gaskets might be damaged. If you overfill the engine with oil, you could cause the engine to build up too much pressure when it's running. This could cause damage to oil seals and gaskets. Question 14. Your engine catches fire. What should you do before attempting to put the fire out? D. Shut off the fuel supply. An engine fire is serious. If the fire breaches the fuel lines, it can easily spread to the fuel tank. If that happens, both the vehicle and its cargo will probably be lost. Therefore, your priority is to shut off the fuel supply. Question 15. When should you consider the effect a speed limiter will have on your vehicle? C. When overtaking. Plan well ahead before overtaking. Be aware that a speed limiter may cause you difficulties when overtaking another vehicle, particularly when climbing a hill. Question 16. You're driving a large vehicle in gusty conditions. Which vehicle is most likely to be affected by buffeting when you overtake it? A motorcycle. The lighter the vehicle, the more likely it is to be affected by the buffeting from your vehicle in windy weather. Give motorcyclists and cyclists extra room when you overtake them, as your vehicle's draft can easily upset their control and balance. Question 17. What should anti-lock brakes let you do when you have to stop in an emergency?
C. Maintain steering control. Anti-lock brakes are a driver aid and can help you maintain steering control while braking. However, you mustn't rely on them to get you out of trouble or expect to be able to make sudden direction changes if you're going too fast. Question 18. You approach a pelican crossing that goes straight across the road. How must you treat it if it has a central island? A. As one continuous crossing. A pelican crossing that goes straight across the road must be treated as one continuous crossing, even if it has a central island. The lights controlling the crossing show to both directions of traffic. You must give way to pedestrians who are still crossing when the amber light is flashing. Question 19. What must you check before setting out on a journey? A. Your mirrors are clean. It's important to know what's happening behind as well as ahead. Your mirrors must always be clean and properly adjusted. Question 20. What should you do if you feel tired while driving on a motorway? B. Leave the motorway at the next exit. Don't continue to drive if you feel the onset of tiredness. Find a safe place to stop for a rest. Walking around in the fresh air during your break will help, but it's no substitute for adequate rest. Question 21. What problem may you have when driving at night? D. You have reduced visibility. You must be able to stop safely in the distance that you can see to be clear ahead. This will be the distance illuminated by your headlights or by street lights, and will generally be less than you can see in daylight. Question 22. You're in the left-hand lane on a three-lane motorway. Why should you check for any vehicles in the right-hand lane before you overtake? D. They may move back to the middle lane as you move out. Vehicles overtaking in the right-hand lane may return to the center lane when they've finished their maneuver. You should look for this before starting to pull out. Don't rely on the size of your vehicle to claim right of way. Question 23. Why should you check for motorcyclists just before turning right into a side road? D. They might be overtaking on your right. Never attempt to change direction to the right without checking your right-hand mirror. A motorcyclist might not have seen your signal and could have decided to overtake. This action should be a matter of routine. Question 24. What happens at Taucan crossings? B. Pedestrians and cyclists may cross. Taucan crossings can be used by cyclists and pedestrians. Some cycle routes lead cyclists to these crossings. Always look out for cyclists, as they're likely to be approaching much faster than pedestrians. Question 25. What action would you take when elderly people are crossing the road? A. Be patient and allow them to cross in their own time. Don't hurry elderly people across the road by getting too close to them or revving the engine. Be aware that they might take longer to cross. 
they might also have hearing difficulties and not hear you approaching. Question 26. You're approaching this roundabout and see the cyclist signal right. Why is the cyclist keeping to the left? C. They may use the left-hand lane to turn right. Cycling in today's heavy traffic can be hazardous. Some cyclists might not feel happy about crossing the path of traffic to take up a position in an outside lane. Be aware of this and understand that, although they're in the left-hand lane, the cyclist might be turning right. Question 27. Why must these road markings be kept clear? A. To allow an unobstructed view of the area. Keeping the markings clear ensures that drivers and riders passing and children crossing have a clear, unrestricted view of each other. Question 28. You're on a country road. What should you expect to see coming towards you on your side of the road? D. Pedestrians. On a quiet country road, always be aware that there may be a hazard just around the next bend, such as a slow-moving vehicle or pedestrians. There might not be a pavement, and people may be walking on your side of the road. Question 29. A horse rider is in the left-hand lane approaching a roundabout. What should you expect the rider to do? B. Go in any direction. Horses and their riders will move more slowly than other road users. They might not have time to cut across heavy traffic to take up a position in the offside lane when they're turning right, it could also be hazardous for them to do so. Therefore, a horse and rider may approach a roundabout in the left-hand lane, even though they're turning right. Question 30. You're driving through a tunnel. What should you do if your vehicle breaks down? C. Switch on hazard warning lights. If your vehicle breaks down in a tunnel, it could present a danger to other traffic. First, switch on your hazard warning lights. If there are passengers in your vehicle, take them to the nearest exit point. You should then call for help from an emergency telephone. Don't rely on being found by the police or being seen by a CCTV camera. The longer a vehicle stays in an exposed position, the more danger it poses to other traffic. Question 31. What should you do if a front tire bursts while you're driving on a motorway? C. Hold the steering wheel firmly. A front tire bursting will seriously reduce your control of the vehicle. Keep calm and resist the temptation to brake hard or swerve. Hold the steering wheel firmly and try to get the vehicle onto the hard shoulder, while allowing it to slow down gradually. Stop as far to the left as possible and switch on your hazard warning lights. Question 32. You're following a motorcyclist along a potholed road. How should you adjust your driving to take account of this situation? B. Give them extra room. Good forward planning can help you keep other road users out of trouble. Information to help you do this is available if you look for it. Watch for clues. For example, a motorcyclist taking a lifesaver look over their shoulder could be about to change direction. Question 33. What should you do when you're following a scooter on a poor road surface? C. 
D. Stay well back and allow them room. On a poor road surface, the rider may need to move out to avoid potholes. You may not get much warning. A look to the right or a lifesaver check may warn you that they're about to move out. Stay well back and allow the rider plenty of room until you can pass safely. Question 34. Under EU rules, you can drive for a maximum of 9 hours a day. On how many days each week can this be extended to 10 hours? D. Two days. Under EU rules, your normal daily driving time mustn't exceed 9 hours. This 9-hour period is defined as the time between any two daily rest periods, or a daily rest period, and a weekly rest period. You are allowed to extend these hours to 10 hours twice a week. Question 35. How much longer will your stopping distance be in snow than in dry weather? C. 10 times as long. In icy or snowy weather, your stopping distance can increase by up to 10 times. Because snowy weather increases the distance needed to stop, you must look further ahead and leave an increased safety margin. If you want to pass DVSA theory test in first time, you can download our EOS app. App contains 2500 DVSA test questions. 250 hazard perception videos, 630 traffic road signs and 300 highway code rules. Even 98.50% people pass their test first time after using our app. You can find link in the description, download app for free from App Store which contains latest 2024 material licensed by DVSA authority, get 3 days free trial for a limited time.